Welcome back to Red and Blue. 2024 races for the U.S. Senate across the country are ramping up. Democratic California Congressman Ro Khanna, who has become a rising star among progressives, has announced he will not jump into a crowded race to fill the seat of retiring Senator Dianne Feinstein. He's instead endorsing his House colleague, Barbara Lee. And today, Democratic Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren announced that she will seek re-election for a third term for her seat in Massachusetts. And everyone has their eyes on Arizona, where Senator Kirsten Sinema hasn't officially declared, but she took a major shot at Democrats just a few days ago. Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego has already jumped into the race, and the congressman joins us now. He represents Arizona's third congressional district. Congressman, good to see you. I appreciate your time. I first want to start with this unfortunate news, of course, coming out of Nashville, Tennessee, where we have yet another school shooting. The president today had re-upped his call for an assault weapons ban. You've served in Congress for several years now. Do you imagine any sort of congressional response here, or has this unfortunately become a rinse and repeat type of situation? Look, I think unfortunately we have a lot of uh, elected officials that rather uh, look away and hope that this is just something that we're going to ignore again. And I just want to remind America, we don't have to live this way. This is not how it's always been. Uh, I have a young son. I don't need to be fearing uh, dropping him off at school. No American uh, deserves that. And it has not always been this way. And we we, we are unfortunately making choices by not regulating uh, the sale of assault weapons. And I think that it's incumbent upon Republicans and Democrats to come and actually work on this uh, and not use excuses uh, such as if they haven't been in the past, because we will keep, unfortunately, seeing this. There will be more school shootings, uh, and Americans just don't deserve it. And do you support a outright ban on assault weapons? I do, um, depending, obviously, what type of weapons and, and at a minimum, some level of regulation, uh, especially if we can get to a, a compromise that actually ends up having, uh, you know, us ha having safer streets, safer schools, while at the same time preserving people's Second Amendment rights. Uh, right now, there is just, it's just, you know, there's no stopping people really from uh, buying these weapons that I used uh, in the Iraq war. And let me tell you, they are very effective weapons. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it's now being used against a lot of our civilians here. Yeah, that's a good point. You are a member of Congress who uh, has that combat experience. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the Senate race in Arizona where you are participating. Democrats on Capitol Hill say they've been waiting for Cinema to make a decision about running again before they decide about an endorsement in this race. Do you think that they need to wait for her to decide? I mean, you, you are the Democrat running. Um, should Schumer and other leaders get behind you? Look, we're focusing on the fact that we have support from Arizona. We have support from Arizonans that are Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. We have a great uh, you know, base of support. We're raising the money that we need to have a competitive race. And we're running against somebody who you know, really has abandoned Arizona. We, I really don't care the fact that she abandoned the Democratic Party. The fact is that she's not really an independent. Uh, you know, We know that she's been taking money and fundraising from a lot of the people that she helped out in the pharmaceutical industry. We know that her base of donors right now are, uh, you know, private equity managers, hedge fund managers, uh, that none of which exist in Arizona. Uh, for all the values that she espouses, she has really abandoned all the Arizona values uh, that really matter, the people that are there that are working hard every day just to survive. So, uh, you know, we're going to focus on our race. We know we have the winning campaign, uh, and I think eventually the, the rest of our colleagues will see that, too. Yeah, I mean, I take your point, too, about how you'd rather have endorsements from Arizonans. But, you know, the party infrastructure, as you know, is really important, especially for fundraising and other resources. I mean, is there a timeline by which you think that Democratic leadership should decide who they're supporting in this race? Well, look, I think they're going to make that decision once they see the campaign we're putting uh, together. It's obviously early in the race, uh, but there is no doubt in our minds once they see uh, the results coming at the end of this quarter the fact that how much excitement we have in Arizona, the fact that we have more than 90,000 individual donations, 20,000 of them only being from Arizona, our average donation is $28. There's no way that Kirsten Sinema is going to be able to match that. And no matter what she does, uh, Kirsten's never coming back to the U.S. Senate. Uh, she does not have the possibility to win. There is no pathway for her to do that. And I think once the, my colleagues and the DSCC and everyone else crunch those numbers, they'll see the same thing. 
I know that you've read this piece in Politico, but I want to bring a little bit of it up. Um, Cinema told a group of Republican lobbyists why she stopped attending Democratic caucus weekly luncheons. Just to remind our audience, she switched parties to independent, but she still caucuses technically with Democrats. And of those lunches, she said she stopped going because they're, quote, ridiculous. Old dudes are eating jello. Everyone's talking about how great they are. I don't really need to be there for that. That's an hour and a half twice a week that I cannot get back. Um, curious about your response to that. I mean, this is just a general attitude of Kirsten Sinema. She also hasn't, hasn't met with her constituents now in almost five years. She hasn't had one town hall where people can actually come and talk to her in an unscripted manner and ask her why she's supporting pharma, why she actually negotiated against, uh, you know, uh, you know, Arizona senior citizens, why she uh, stopped a $15 minimum wage increase. This is just her general attitude where she feels that she has a right to be elected, but not to actually have to answer to anybody. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think that's one of the reasons why her numbers are so low and she's not going to be able to put, mount a very serious campaign. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about um, Biden, because when you run, he presumably will be on the top of your ticket. Uh, we're still waiting for him to announce his official campaign. But there's this new Monmouth poll out today that shows about 44 percent of Democrats want him to step aside and have someone else be the nominee. And I was kind of struck when you look down um, deeper in the numbers, it was something of 54 percent of voters, 49 and under say that they want someone else on the top of the ticket. Does that concern you at all? No, it doesn't. Look, I think a lot of people are going to be reading uh, polls and trying to, you know, discover uh, what's in the, the tea leaves. At the end of the day, he has been one of the most consequential presidents that we've had in quite a while, especially Democratic presidents. He has delivered uh, for this country. And I'll be proud to run with him at the top of the ticket in Arizona. Uh, and we will win Arizona for, for him and for the Democratic Party. I mean, you are one of the younger members of the House. You would be one of the more younger members of the Senate if elected. Um, there has been this argument of generational change. I'm curious what you think of that when it comes to the Democratic Party. Well, look, I think generational change matters, but also delivering results matters. And we've had a president that has delivered uh, massive change and massive uh, programs for this country, especially for uh, a lot of the younger population of this country, specifically a lot of the uh, investments in climate change and climate change mitigation. I think something we should all be proud of. The fact that he's trying to stop uh, the gouging of, of our students through the student loan programs, uh, you know, the, the investment uh, in, in our younger families when he's trying to bring back the child tax credit. On and on, he has brought home, uh, I think, a lot of victories for Democrats, independents, uh, and, and uh, you know, Republicans that are on the younger side. So this is why I'm very proud to be running with him. I think he will have a very successful election. I think you'll actually have support among younger voters in that regard, too. All right. Well, we will stay tuned to that announcement, and we will be following your campaign as well. Congressman Gallego, thank you for joining us, and we'll keep in touch. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate your time, too.